So welcome, my name is Sumner. I stream Advent of Code. Today is day 10, and we're about five minutes out. Okay, so a couple of updates since uh, yesterday. The first major one is that I've added a, a watch exec on my run script. This will basically allow me to do something like this, run nine, for example. And whenever I change the code on part nine, on day nine, for example, if I made it wrong, it'll, it'll actually run the code automatically as soon as I save. And it'll, in this case, it's an error. If I fix it, then it goes back. Oh, this is why you show up early. I think I have a bug. Let me just check. So I was I was working on this on my laptop and forgot to push. So so let's try this again. Um, now if I run nine and then do twenty three for example, it gives me a wrong answer. Change it back. It's back to the right answer. So this hopefully will make it a little bit faster. I don't have to actually call the run script manually every single time to test. It should just automatically do this. Uh, thank you, Crispy Breads in the chat. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully, hopefully this goes as well as yesterday. Yesterday was my best performance so far. Um, I got 168 on the leaderboard, so that's by far the best I have done. Um, and I have no idea how I could shave off an extra minute and nine seconds, which I would have needed to do. Kristen, sorry. Um, welcome into chat. So we'll see. Um, I don't think I'm going to leaderboard at all. That's not the goal. The goal is only to beat my friends. So um, I think that's about it on the updates here. I did add an assertion to my template code um, right here. This will just help ensure that I don't accidentally typo and do a, a three and two threes or something like this if it turns out to be a um, another one of these machine VM problems. Kristen, you better be rooting for me, not Easton. I am I am intending to beat him tonight. Yeah, he's uh he's not that far back. He's only five points back. It's getting pretty close. Okay, so I have a feeling it'll be along the lines of day eight. So I'm gonna be prepared for for this machine thingy. And I'm hoping that that bet pays off and that I'm able to get this in really fast. All right, here we go for day 10. Distribution of voltage differences between the charging outlet, the adapters, and your device. What? Okay.
Okay, so the highest plus 22, three higher than the highest rated adapter. Seven, okay, so the, the seven differences of one, five differences of three. Here's a larger example in this example, the larger in a chain that uses all of the adapters are 22 differences of one jolt and 10 of three. Find the chain that uses, uses all of your adapters to connect the charging outlet to your device built adapter to charge the voltage differences between them. What is the number of one jolt multiplied by the number of three jolts? Okay, so Oh, this sounds really hard, guys. Um, okay, so first of all, let's do this and then down here. Um, let's sort this. So I think that'll, that looks good. So, um, Oh, that's a pretty small input. Um, okay, so so I can do while true, I guess. Let's just do this. Oh, this is just the number of diffs. Okay. Um, That doesn't seem right. Oh, it should just be y minus x. Shoot. Dang it.
so this if we if we do if we take this and we do oh well that's totally wrong am i missing some rule i thought it was just one to two Oh. Shoot. I was off by one. Okay, so this is a graph problem, I think, and it's like a tree figuring out which... Okay, this is somewhere where I can potentially gain some slight amount of ground. So first of all, how do we model this as a graph? We will model it as the eligible things. Um, Um, for I, J, comma, K, and C. If S less than or equal to three, he's at I equals K. If k greater than, I think that'll just work. Nope, this is a default dict. Zero can go to Okay.
paths from x to really we need an extra thing um Okay, so then what we need is these zero equals one. Um, and then these And minus three equals I am so slow. Wait, do we always have to end with forty nine? Yes, so so that should be just fine. Okay, is um, if is x equals m return one for the perm path zero. Shoot. This is not a good day, guys. Um, does recursion just not work here? Might I have to enumerate the paths differently? Okay. No, recursion should totally work here. I think that I'm just... Oh my gosh. Zero, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and one, two, three, three, four, four. Dang it. 
three Just We never get here. Oh my gosh. Okay, so at this, this we're returning one. So then here we return one will return one. Oh, but then here, 162, 163. So this is a path to end function. One path to end here. Um, From 161, there's to 162 or 163. So for each one, so this is a plus equals. Oh my gosh. That was really bad. That was really sucky. Let's see. Let's see, Kristen. Did I beat Easton? No, he, he beat me. I beat him on part one. He beat me on part two. My incremental was absolute trash. Oh my gosh, that was bad. Yeah, look at this, 12 minutes. What a carnage. That was so bad. Well, at least it was a f top 1000 finish and it looks like so I'm 13 back of the leader now. <sighs> Thanks for the encouraging words, Kristen. No, this is like, it, I don't know. It was kind of unfortunate. Like I gotta figure out what happened. So first of all, let's do this. Good thing that uh, Python has, um, uh, good thing that Python has like arbitrarily sized integers. This would have been a freaking nightmare without it. Um, So let's just let's just do this before I start going in and screwing up things. Okay, so what happened here? Um, why was I so slow? Oh, hello. 
welcome into chat, um, Kelly. Okay, so first of all, I did an incorrect submission because I got off by one on these. I forgot that you need to go from zero to one, as well as from the end to the, the last one. So this one, that, that kind of hurts. Um, that cost me at least a minute, obviously. Yeah, good job, by the way. Like, that was a very impressive finish. I think you beat beat both both Colin and I. Let's see. Yeah, your first place. First place. That's that's impressive. And look at me. See? Terrible. Fourth place. Can't even podium on, on, on uh, part one. Yeah, I don't know. So, okay, the first, the first part... Um, I thought that it was going to be a graph traversal immediately. Like it, it felt like a graph traversal. So like actually like started coding up like too much graphy or no, what did I try to do? Uh, yeah, it was kind of like a graph. I, I tried to do the kind of graph part of it. Um, initially, like I was like, oh, this is a graph problem, which it ended up being, but like, I, I didn't realize that part one was really just a simple, like sliding window sort the inputs that that was really important to sort the the input um and then and then increment you know just just look at the diff uh really i should have used y minus x but i was lazy and i did x minus y like an idiot um initially and i realized they were all negative so i just absolute valued them instead of switching them around so i don't know that was kind of dumb and then this i mean this went fine from once I figured that out, and then once I figured out the this issue, um, zip is nice. That was definitely a just being able to bang that out helped me. Okay, and then down here, I don't know. It it was fine. It was kind of stupid. Like once I identified it as a as a as a graph problem, I immediately went to a graph. This was kind of slow. I was retarded and forgot this again. I need to get better at that. Um, I literally even like did the enumerate like I and J thing and then just didn't remember to check I and J. Um, so maybe I should really, instead of doing these, just go by indices in the future. It, it, may, it may save me some real pain later on. Um, and then I initialized these two, which was a good idea. So basically giving me terminal points on at both zero and at um, at the very end. Uh, and then I screwed this up multiple times, this condition, but that wasn't that bad to debug. Um, what was really bad was this paths function, which I think the LRU cache helped. Let's just actually tell C print. Um, cache info. Oh, so it helped not at all. Okay. <laughs> I thought it would help having an LRU cache on that. Oh, well, um, maybe a bit of premature optimization there, but live and learn. So what happened here? First of all, I tried to do... I did the wrong condition. The base case was correct, but my my recursion was incorrect. Um, when I iterated over all of the elements for the given x, and then initially I had this plus like z initialized to zero, and then add the paths. Like initially I had that, but then I just I thought for some reason I had to multiply, but then I was multiplying by one, which of course wasn't going to work. So it was just a myriad of bad math and bad thinking there. Um, Colin and Chad is, did the same thing as me. He did the, um, on part one, where he had um, had this backwards, subtract the subtraction backwards. Okay, I feel maybe a little bit better. <laughs> That's not just me. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks for hopping on stream. I do appreciate the support. Though apparently you are kind of a little bit biased towards some of my competitors, so I'm not sure how I feel about that. 
Um, tell you did good job, by the way. Um, okay, um, and this was fine. I mean, you know, it's kind of doing the recursion was was just it worked. I don't know. So I guess just a little bit of explanation um, of what's going on with part with like this solution here, just for people who are confused. Um, let me get rid of a few of these. So part one, the basic idea is that we need to count uh, the number of times in our input that we have um, a jump of one step and a jump of three steps. So 16 to 15 would be a jump of one step. 11 to 12 would be a jump of one step. Where's the three step? Oh, four to seven, there we go, four to seven. There's a three step. So, so the easiest way to do this is just to, to sort, which is what I've done here, and then step through and kind of like test all of the adjacent pairs. So what zip does with this, you know, having both sequence and sequence uh, starting at one, so this chops off the first element of, of the sequence. Um, basically, it ends up, make, x is going to be the first element, y is going to be the second, and then it just will, will step through the, the list like that. And then I'm checking if the diff is one or three and incrementing ones or threes appropriately, and then the problem, how do you multiply it together? And that's the answer. Um, the other way of doing this is just y minus x. That also works instead of doing the absolute value, but um, yeah, the trick is final minus initial, not initial minus final, because final, initial minus final is always going to be negative, and so that's, that's just not going to work. So for part two, it's a graph problem. Basically, it's counting the number of ways to get from one point in the graph to another point in the graph. So the, the first point is the zero, the, the ground of your adapter, or that you have the plug-in point. And then the end point being the, the very end of the of the chain. Yeah, so so the idea is that we're gonna do that recursively. Um, and this paths function basically gives you the number of paths to the end of the chain. Um, so basically we're counting the number of paths from zero to the end of the chain, and there's a heck ton of them. Uh, two to the 48. So this totally requires you to use a long integer, a 64-bit integer. Um, so make sure you do that, obviously. Um, it's, it's big. It, it's bolded, I'm pretty sure, just so that you make sure that you use a big int. In Python, there's variable sized integers, so it's it's totally fine. You don't have to worry about that, which is one of the reasons why I like using it. So effectively, what I'm doing here is just computing a, a mapping of adapter to eligible adapters to plug-in. So for example, into zero, I can plug one, two, or three. So into the into the adapter for the plane. Hello, Alex, welcome into chat. Appreciate you coming by. Um, if anybody here in chat has questions about um, how I'm doing this, what I'm doing, um, I, I don't know all of your, you know, kind of comfort levels with different um, programming concepts, so Feel free to pop any questions that you have and let me. I, Alex, I am in the United States. So, okay, back to the explanation. So, so yeah. So here I'm saying that you can plug in either a plug of class one, two, or three into port zero, and then um, at the end of the chain, you have the single adapter that is that is rated for 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 the max of your entire sequence, and then you have to add one more, which is the m plus three, which is your 
computer at the end at the very end of the chain after all your adapters. What I want to know is why you have 103 adapters. I think you brought too many. But um, yeah, there's only one element at the end of the chain. And then there's many, many ways of getting there. So like, as you can see here, like you have to get to 49, but there's many ways of getting to 49 through your adapter chain. So all this is doing is initializing that dictionary, keeping track of what you can plug into what, and that's about it. What happens down here is if you found the, the end node, then return one. So this is the base case. So anyway, m plus three, I'm looking for that. If I find one, then path plus one. Otherwise, this is the case that, you know, this is not the, in the non-base case scenario. Um, basically, we need to count the number of paths from the current node to the end. And to do that, we have to look at all the things that could be plugged into a, this current adapter and then determine how many paths can come from each one of those and sum them together. So really what I could do here is, let's do, um, you know, if I wasn't stupid, I would have just done this. Same, same thing, uh, maybe a little bit more Pythonic. And maybe here, maybe something like this actually would, would do the trick. Yeah, okay, so that's the way to go about it. Um, then we don't need J and K actually. Oh, we do need I here. That seems reasonably clean. So I could have short-circuited this as well, because I don't need to go, this is O of N squared. I, I don't need to do this as a for loop. I could just look forward three spaces, but I just decided the for loop was easy enough to think about. I guess it did kind of bite me though. So maybe it would have been better to just hard code it, hard code the next three. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some things that I could have made better about that. Let's just take a look at the at the leaderboard here. So, so what happened? Um, so I managed I managed to not suck at the incremental as much as Colin. So that probably helped me a little bit. Um, but uh, Kelly here did a very good job. My incremental time, I'm going to have to look back into the stream and figure out what went wrong. Uh, it was just, it was just terrible. I mean, I feel like, you know, this seven minutes is pretty slow, but you know, at least it's acceptable. It's not like the worst thing ever. You know, I'm within a couple minutes um, on that. Uh, let's see, where was I actually? So seven minutes and I solved at five. So really only like a minute or not not two minutes before me so that's not like that bad it's kind of bad but it's not awful but the incremental kelly good job like eight minutes that's only a, a, a eight minutes diff submitted on 14 minutes i submitted on 19 so that's where i lost some points here i still managed to lose points <laughs> to the leader um and i also um flip-flopped with with Kelly on the leaderboard as well. So, and it's literally my territory. Like graph problems are my my thing, my my favorite. And then I just totally screwed it up. <sighs> okay, what is there? Is there anything to learn? I, I like my error here on part one. This off by one. It was annoying, but like, I. <sighs> I'm kind of okay with it in the sense that like, I, I don't like that I had that, but like, you know, it wasn't, 
entirely just the worst thing ever. And part two, yeah, just a myriad of bad things. I'm going to definitely keep this in my back pocket for for the future because this, this was really effective. Or this is really effective. What I did wasn't. That was pretty dumb. But I'm going to keep this in my back pocket for the future. And yeah, I just screwed up the recursion. So not, I don't feel like there's a ton that I could have improved on, to be perfectly honest. It was kind of just a bit disappointing, uh, disappointing how slow I was. So, okay, um, let's call it there. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, let me just actually check to make sure that there's no additional questions in chat. Yeah, thank you all for watching. I really, really appreciate it. It's kind of fun to have all of you here on stream. Um, if you're on YouTube, uh, I'd appreciate if you give it a like and come over and follow me on Twitch. I'm doing this every single day. So I will be back for day 11 tomorrow at uh, 10 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. See you then.